Welcome to the Prepper Homestead Workshop. Um, like most people, we're on a budget. And so we, we figure everything out. And when it comes to food storage, we have a food storage budget each month. Our long-term food storage is pretty much fixed at this point. Our medium and short-term food storage, we rotate things out. The only thing that we're really adding to is our medium uh, food storage, medium term food storage. So I want to show you some of the things I took our $100 budget this month and picked up. The most expensive thing I picked up today was some instant milk. Now this is uh, 30, 32 quarts of milk and uh, these, these bags run uh, $6.98 a bag. So, you know, this was, uh, what, $28 of my, my budget. But um, we get this, we have dairy goats, and of course, you know, we get milk from the store. What we get this for is if our goats aren't in milk and we don't have access to the store supply. Now, according to the dates on the bag, this stuff will last for three years. Um, we've kept it as long as five years and then tried, and it's been fine. What we do is we will take these containers, which are Mylar, and we'll put them in a food saver bag and freeze them before we put them in a cool, dark place to store for our medium term storage. Um, like I said, we use this in recipes and stuff. I would not mix a glass up and drink it. It's, it's not quite as tasty as fresh milk, but it is something very handy to have on hand. Applesauce. This stuff is uh, $2 for three pounds. The uh, best by date is uh, a couple of years, but we found if you keep it in a cool, uh, dark, dry place, it'll last five or six years. And we have apple trees, but we can't put up applesauce for what we can buy this for. So while we can get it, we go ahead and get it. And once again, this isn't for just eating a bowl of applesauce. You can also use it to, to bake in things and get a little extra flavor in some stuff. Uh, our goal is to, even out of season, uh, even if we had a a bad year with our orchards or our berries or anything that we put up that we can have a serving of fruits of some kind every day even middle of winter after after a bad year so that's why we put this sort of thing up peaches in our everybody gets a serving of fruit today peaches are a big part of that and we really like peaches um, this is something that I think everybody in the family if given an opportunity, we'll just sit down and eat a can. So we like to keep some of this around. Now, when it comes to peaches, even the generic ones like these um, are more expensive than the other canned fruits. Uh, so around a dollar twelve a can. But one can we can get four servings out of, so it gives our our family a, a serving. And you can also make cobblers with them and things like that. So it's good all the way around. Okay, these are just some bags of uh, peppermints. We like to keep those around just because <coughs> not only just on a daily basis, it's nice to have something sweet, but uh, if you're having, yeah, you know, if you're sick, sometimes they'll help soothe the cough. Uh, you can use them in tinctures to, to make things taste better, and they're just handy to have around all the way around. These little bags cost a little under a dollar a piece, and there's 36 in there. What we'll do to make them last as long as possible is we will take those, stick them in a food saver bag, and then keep them in a cool, dry, dark place. Uh, the main enemy of, of hard candies and things like that is temperature and moisture. So make sure you keep that in mind. These are mandarin oranges. They run about a dollar a can, and uh, it just adds to our variety. Oh, pineapple and the juice. Now, once again, this can be used in cooking. Um, you know, there's lots of little desserts my wife will make out of these, but we'll also eat the fresh pineapple and drink the juice. And as far as value, what we've discovered with the canned fruits, the pineapple is the best value. They're 98 cents a can for a 20 ounce can, which is five more ounces than the mandarin oranges for the same price. Tuna could be in our uh, medium term storage food, our canned food, our five year range food, but really it's in our short term food because we eat so much of it. We make a lot of tuna salad and 
uh, a casserole occasionally. Uh, so, you know, we go through a lot of it. And this, uh, the generic light tuna in, in water like this, this is real good. We use this in tuna salads a lot. Uh, we also get a lot of the pouch tunas and different flavors that those are real good just on crackers. But this type of tuna, if you just cook some noodles and mix some tuna in, you get a lot of protein and carbs. It's a real good um, meal to energize you and, and help fill you up. So tuna is a good one to get. All purpose flour. Now we go through a lot of different kinds of flour and my wife is the baker. So she she puts the baking soda and baking powder and stuff in there to change the kinds of flour. That's that's not my expertise. But we go through a lot of it. But what we're going to do with this and what we do with this every so often is we'll buy this, we put it in a food saver vacuum seal bag and then freeze it in a chest freezer. And that moves this from being a short term thing into a medium term storage thing. Um, you need bread. Uh, you need biscuits. You need things like that. You know, you need a cookie every now and then. And so th we put this up and this is, you know, flour for the calories you get is, is dirt cheap to put up. Uh, I think this is around $2 for five pounds is what I paid for this today. Now last but certainly not least is garbage bags. Now the reason why these go into this budget is what we actually use these for is we have a set amount of bottled water that we keep on hand. Now we do rotate that out, but just to be on the safe side, those cases of bottled water, we put in garbage bags. One of these garbage bags, we can put two cases of water in and have it stacked up. And that way we can have a large amount of water that's not being exposed to light and it lasts a little longer. And then once we take the water out and we use it, we can use these garbage bags in our garbage can. And uh, we just needed to, uh, to bag up some more cases of water. So that's why we got these. Now this is what we figured would work within our budget for our food storage for this month. We do different things each month for our long-term food storage. Now I do realize not everybody has the same budget. So let me show you this from a few different angles. This is what this would look like at $50. I took the garbage bags out and half of everything except for the peppermints and the applesauce. I left uh, three things of applesauce because yeah, I had five. You, I didn't want to cut one in half. But anyway, half as much food, half as much money, it still adds up. Now this is $25 worth of food. Do this every month, it'll add up. This is $5 worth. Now that's still five pounds of flour, a can of pineapples, uh, a can of tuna, and three pounds of applesauce. Now maybe you can do $5 a week extra, $5 a month, uh, $5 every couple of weeks, um, but it's that much less you have to worry about. Don't be intimidated by food storage. You can do it a little at a time. And, you know, the, the pineapple and the applesauce, you know, if, if I was just starting out and just doing my food storage, I'd be doing the rice and the beans to build that up quicker. But this is just an example of how you can do it to add to it and add some variety. So anyway, uh, hopefully this has given you some inspiration, uh, some motivation, and uh, y'all be careful.